Hi, welcome. I'm Claire Mulman here. Good to see you again. Just a minute. I have to adjust my phone a little bit. It, I see that the light there. Okay. I hope this is better. Okay. Good. Good to see you. Today, um, I want to talk about um, how to interpret the Bible. And then I, did, I gave some examples in the past couple of weeks. By the way, this is number six. And today I want to talk about can women teach or can women be leaders in the church? Can they be elders or in the pastoral team or whatever? Because there are so many confusions and people do not know what to think. So that's what I want to do today. And last, um, last weekend, number five, I talked about 1 Corinthians 14, that women has to be silent in the church. I will not... Uh, talk about that today because you can go back to uh, our website www.cwowi.eu and it stands for church without walls okay you can go to my facebook page or to youtube and find all those videos but uh, today i want to focus about first timothy chapter 2 verse 12 because that is oftentimes a problem for people when they read it and remember we are still talking about how to interpret the bible how do you uh, do you interpret a scripture you have to look at a whole of the word what does the whole of the word say you have to look at to see what the, what the word says but also what the spirit is doing in the world not only now what is the world's spirit doing um, in the world in the past and and what will the spirit be doing in the future of course uh, where there women teaches where there where women used by the lord in the old testament or in new testament we'll see that later but let's go first to first timothy 2 verse what did i mention first timothy 2 verse 12 uh, there it says, verse 11 and 12, let a woman learn in silence with all submission and I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. Well, you have to go to the Greek to really understand it. And I have a wonderful app on my phone and on my iPad. It's called BibleHub.com, BibleHub. And when you uh, look up a scripture, you can go to the Greek or to the Hebrew and read different translations. That is very helpful if you want to really study it. So what does it mean? It says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. It means to domineer, to, uh, to domineer, but to be in silence. And silence does not imply speechlessness, but it's about a uh, calmness, an inner calmness. Remember what I talked uh, last uh, last week that uh, in Corinth, the people, the women, they came, they didn't know anything. They were unlearned. So they came to Christ and they uh, experienced their freedom and they just had questions. They want to know things and they interrupted the meeting and the flow of the spirit so that is why paul is saying i do not want to domineer so obviously there were some women who were domineering he says you have to be uh, uh um uh, what does it say you have to be uh, to be in silence mean your inner calmness all right and paul mentioned of course it's not about the the, uh, the issue is not women teaching but the uh, women usurping authority and taking authority that was not theirs because they didn't know they had to learn first before they could teach okay then let's go to okay and then you think okay women cannot teach what does paul say about it you know there's also like a rule how to interpret the bible what does that same uh, teacher what does paul say about the same subject when you go to chapter 2 verse 2 first timothy chapter no second timothy 2 verse 2 if you have your bible there it says, Paul saying to Timothy, and the things that you've heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. And you say, ah, see, commit them to faithful men. Okay, now you are contradicting yourself. But in the Greek, the word translated as man is anthropos, and that means one of a human race or people. So he doesn't say a man, he says people. So the word relates to both gender, male and female. So here Paul is encouraging men and women to teach. If Paul had intended, intended to prohibit women in teaching ministry, he missed a great opportunity here. There would have not have been a better place to use the Greek word aner, meaning males, men, males, rather than anthropos, which means a person or a people. So for Paul to settle the issue once and for all, Paul used the gender inclusive person. If any person wants to be any person, male or female, this was no accident. So he is strongly exhorting that even responsible women should make the teaching of the word a very high 
a priority. And they say, oh, okay, okay. But doesn't the word not say that men are to be elders and not women? And I even heard it recently that the church decided, okay, women can preach sometimes or whatever, can be in children's ministry, but they are not to be the elders because the Bible says that men are to be the elders. Does it? Let's go to First Timothy chapter 3. And again, we have to go to, um, to the Greek, what it actually means. And I'm so sorry that the Bible was not always translated that very well. And I think the persons are the people that translated the King James. They probably did not understand that in God there is no difference between male or female, Greek or, or, or Gentile, free or slave. We are all one in Christ. They probably did not understand it. So their thinking was, okay, it's not anyone. It must be a man. So 1 Timothy 3 verse 1. Um, it says, this is a faithful saying, if a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. They say, see, if a man desires the position of a bishop. But in the Greek, it doesn't say man, it says anyone or someone or whoever, whoever desires the position of a bishop. If anyone desires the position of a bishop, it means male or female. But then, of course, he says a bishop, but actually is an overseer, or you can translate it as a pastor, one who's taking care of the sheep, an overseer. A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife. See, it is talking about a man. No, when you, again, when you go to the Greek, the, the word husband in Greek is the word aner, A-N-E-R, which, which means a male human. So that word aner could be translated as man or husband. So you have to decide which one was, uh, you have to use the according, uh, according to the context. And then he says the husband of one wife doesn't mean that one cannot be divorced. It means it, he must be a one woman man. So not be married or have two women or even more women, but a one woman man. Okay, and then it says, um, uh, the one wife, again, this is not wife, this is the word uh, guna, where do I have it? Somewhere in my translations uh, for women. Oh yes, the word guna, guna in Greek, G-U-N-E, which means a woman or a wife. So you have to decide what does he mean? Does he mean a woman or does he mean wife? And that is according to the context. But what is the context? When you look back, at first Timothy, it is about men and women in the church. It's about leadership, about elders, about positions. He is not talking about marriage. If he was talking about marriage, he would have used uh, then it was a right, uh, uh, good, um, 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 excellent uh, translation to say husband and to say wife. But you have to say you can also translate it as a man or a woman. Okay, verse four in First Timothy three four. Um, there it says, one who rules his own house well. One who rules his own house well. Where do I have my here? Um, his is here in, written in italics, I think in your Bible too, meaning the word is not in the original text. So you can read it. One who rules the house well, having children in submission. Also his is again, not in the original text. So it's still talking about if anyone desires the position of a bishop, he must be blameless. If it is a husband, if it is a man actually, if it is a man, he has to have one wife, not given to wine and so on and so on. But it must be one who rules the house well, having children in submission with all reverence. And then again, the verse five, if a man doesn't know how to rule his house, Again, a man means anyone. If anyone does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Uh, well, of course, and then it says in verse 8, likewise, or meaning in the same manner, deacons must be reverent, and so on, and so on. And in verse 11, um, in the same manner, wives must be reverent. It says their wives, but there is not in the original text. You can read it likewise, wives or women must be reverent. So he's talking first about the office of a, of an, uh, of a bishop, of an overseer. Then he talks about the man. You might, they must have one wife. It must be temperate, not give to wine, gentle, not quarrelsome. Have your, uh, your, you must rule your house well. Uh, have your children in submission. And then it uh, talks about deacons. 
be reverent and so on. And then it talks about the wives or the women, actually. They must be reverent, not slanderous, temperate and faithful in all things. So Paul is not saying at all that women cannot be a teacher or cannot be in leadership or not can, cannot be elders. If he, if he does mean that, so why did Paul have like women and uh, women in his ministry team? Because you have to, to translate also and to interpret this uh, to the rest of the Bible. When you go to Romans 16, verse 1 and 2, you found Phoebe. She was a servant, she was a deacon in the church, and she was a helper of Paul. In verse 3, he talks about Priscilla and Aquila, and they both functioned as apostles. There was a husband and a wife team. They were Paul's fellow workers. And even uh, Priscilla actually was mentioned more often because she was like the dominant speaker, and she was recognized to be a great teacher in the church. And Paul uh, acknowledged her, so Priscilla and Aquila, they both functioned as apostles. So if a woman can function as an apostle, of course she can function as a leader or as an elder. Verse 7 in Romans 6, it means Andronicus and Gunia. I don't know how to pronounce it. That's also a husband and wife apostolic team. Verse Olympus, again Colossians 4.15, Nymphas who had a church in her, her house. It was not only that she hosted it, but it means that she was the leader of that house church. So definitely we can see women, Paul using women, having women in his ministry. And by the way, when you go back to the Old Testament, of course you can see that throughout the whole Bible, there were so many people and women used of the Lord. Let me see if I can find them here. Uh, I have like a, a book written about it. Uh, well, you know Miriam, of course, she was, uh, where do I have that? Here, Miriam, there was a sister of Aaron, she led the worship. She was a prophetess. You have Deborah, she led and judges the nation. And she was also a prophetess. Huldah, she was a prophetess. Esther, um, who, uh, the women preaches, Psalm 68, 11 says, God gave the word and great was the company of women that preached it. Wow, you have Esther. Oh yeah, I mentioned her already. Uh, in Joel 2, 28, or in verse 2 actually says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So throughout the whole Bible, you see that God uses women. You see that he uses men and women equally because we both represent him. And that's why Paul could say in Galatians 3 verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek nor slave nor free nor male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Meaning it doesn't matter what is your background. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter if you are highly educated or not. It doesn't matter if you are a man or a woman. We are. It means if you are in Christ, that is important because God looks at your spirit and he can use women as well. And he has done that in the past. He's still doing that today. By the way, look at the Iranian church nowadays. There's a great video about what's happening in the Iranian church. Uh, the, so many house churches that people have to go underground because they are persecuted, they are killed because they believe in, in God. But it's growing very fast and all those churches are mostly predominantly led by women. So if you see it in the word, if you see the Holy Spirit using women in the past and even today, so that, that is the way how you interpret things. And when you think, still think, well, uh, women cannot be in leadership or they are not permitted to teach because of that one scripture that was translated wrong. Okay, think again and study again and see what the Lord is doing all over the world. I will hope that it gave a great peace to you. And I hope that the women will, will, will fulfill their call. It's not my desire to uh, be a feminist, not at all. I was accused to be a feminist. I'm not, definitely not. But I believe that God can use women as well as men and we work together and together we can fulfill the great promise, uh, the great um, commission. Okay, bless you. See you next week.